Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this scene using gouache. All of the materials that I used will be listed in the description box below so you can always refer to that. I used my Hannah Molay sketchbook today, it is an A6 size sketchbook. Then I have my palette, two jars of water, a cloth or you could use a tea towel and I also have my paints. I'm using Winsor Newton gouache paints and I also use Art Spectrum paints. They are an Australian brand based in Melbourne. Then I have a spray bottle which I use to mist my paints to keep it fresh on the palette. And to start off, I just clip down the edges of my sketchbook. Then I always start by doing a light sketch. So I'm just using a pencil and I actually ended up moving this line that I sketched in here. So I started off with it around the halfway line, but I actually realized I needed a bit more space for the sky. So when you're doing your sketch, you can leave about two thirds of the page for the sky and about one third for the road. And for the paints, I start off with black, phthalo blue, primary red, spectrum red, and white. I'm using a flat brush here. This one is an angular brush, but you can just use any kind of flat brush you have. And to paint in the sky, I am picking up the black and a little bit of the phthalo blue, and I'm just mixing it together to create a really dark blue that's almost a black. And you can see here that the paint wasn't spreading very fast, so I picked up a bit of water just to thin down the paints a little bit more. And I'm just going to block in the top of the sky. You'll also notice I'm not using any washi tape and that's just personal preference because these are just sketches in my sketchbook. I don't mind if it has a messy edge. So I'm just going to block in that top area and then as I move down I'm going to add in a bit more blue and slightly lighten it because at the top of the sky is where it's darkest and then it gets lighter as you move down. Now without washing off my brush, I'm going to pick up some of the Spectrum Red and mix that with black and a little bit of the blue to create a really dark reddish colour and then we're just going to lay that underneath where we painted it in the dark blue before and on camera it is a little bit hard to tell the difference in the colour, it almost just looks like black but it is a little bit different and then I add in a bit of the shadow underneath as well. Now I'm switching to a round brush and I'm picking up some of the primary red and the spectrum red to create a dark red colour again but one that's just slightly lighter than the colour we had before and again I'm just laying that colour just underneath where I put in the dark red and it is hard to see the difference in the colour on the paper but it is a little bit lighter. If you're wondering why I am using two different reds, it is because the primary red is more of a cool red, so it's a little bit more pink, and then the spectrum red is more of a warm red. So usually if I want to mix a more vibrant purple, then I will use the primary red, and if I want to mix a more dull purple, then I will use the spectrum red. So that's just a bit of helpful color theory knowledge. At this point I'm also misting my paints a bit just because I noticed that I was using quite a bit of water to try and thin them down so I'm just misting them so it's easier for me to use the paint and then I'm mixing a bluish purple color so I'm using the phthalo blue and I've mixed it with white and then just put in a bit of the primary red so this blue is the highlights on the clouds and then in order to blend it out into the darker parts of the sky I just have to mix a darker purple color and put that on top so as I said before if I want to mix more of a vibrant purple then I will use primary red so now I am just laying that on top to try and blend it out a bit and then I also try and mix an in-between color and try to blend all of that out and then I'm going to mix a darker bluish purple again just to lay that on top and to really try and blend that out into the clouds. When I was painting this, I did think that it was going to be a bit more challenging to explain how I painted this scene in step by step, just because for me a lot of it was actually just experimenting. So most of the time I was looking at the reference photo and just picking out the colors I could see and then just trying to blend it out on the page. So maybe instead of explaining step by step, I'll try and give more of an overview of the process and what my approach to this whole painting was and hopefully 
because you are able to see my palette and my color mixing it will help you to understand how to paint this in your own way so in terms of how i captured the sky in this painting i wanted to show a lot of depth and to show the intensity of the sky or the clouds and in order to do that i made sure that I was showing the highlights underneath each of the clouds so that shows that there is a bit of light coming through and hitting the bottom of the clouds but because it is sunset and it's almost night time most of the clouds are quite dark and in order to create depth I would have the clouds be quite large at the front and then as it recedes into the distance I'm just doing thin lines across the bottom to indicate where they are as an example with this one you can see now I am trying to add some of the highlights to the bottom of this cloud and then above it is very dark and then below it there is also very dark lines underneath and I repeat this process keeping in mind that the lines should get thinner and smaller as it recedes into the distance and that creates the illusion of depth. So here you can see beneath each of the highlights I'm going in with a very dark color that's almost black and I am putting that underneath each of the highlights and that is what makes it look more realistic like the light is hitting the bottom of the clouds. And here I am putting in the highlights again. So I'm putting the highlights in just above where the darker shadows are. Another thing to keep in mind if you want this to look realistic is you have to make sure that everything is very smoothly blended out. So I do my best to try and blend out the colors as much as I can and where there are two colors that look very harsh and where it's not blended out properly then what I do is I try to mix the in-between color and then blend it out between the two colors. So this was when I realized that I needed a bit more space for the sky so I just erased the lines that I did earlier and just shifted everything down a little bit. Here you can see I'm going in with the shadows again so I'm using black and I'm just defining the shadows and I want to place the darker shadow just underneath where the brightest highlight is and I also try and blend it out so it looks a lot more realistic. 
Now I want to mix a shade of red and for this part I actually just played around with the colours to experiment and see which colour I thought best matched the one in the reference photo. So I'm using a mixture of the primary red, the spectrum red and also yellow and you can see I'm just laying it on the paper and then I just adjust it as I see fit. So if I want to lighten it a bit I'll add in some white and some yellow and then I'm just putting that at the horizon line and I bring it up a little bit as well and I lighten it as I bring it up to meet the other sky that I've painted. Now to mix a very dark red, I use the spectrum red and I mix it with some of the black and I'm putting that on the right side of the sky. And to blend it out, you can see I am just lightening the mixture by adding in a bit more white as I move across to the left and I'm just trying to mix the in-between colors in order to match it to the left side of the sky. Then I pick up some of the yellow paint and just put in a few streaks on the right side. In this part I'm just going over a bit of the top of the sky because I felt like it wasn't dark enough so you don't have to do this part if you feel like your sky looks fine. What I did was just mixed a bit more of the very dark blue paint and then just try to blend it out a bit more smoothly at the top. I just wanted to make the top a little bit more intense and a little bit more dark. Then moving back to where I was working on before, I'm just intensifying that right side with a bit more of the dark red mixture and then I let it dry before I go in with some yellow again and just put in a few more streaks of yellow. Then the rest of this part I'm just going back in and refining some areas and trying to bring out a bit more details in it so it looks more realistic and this part is hard to explain how I did it in a step by step process because it's really up to the individual person to analyze the reference photo in their own painting and see how they can enhance it and just bring out more of the shadows and the light in the sky so I'm analyzing the reference photo and then comparing it to my painting and just seeing how I can build on it and improve it so I do that just by adding in more shadows so using more of the black mixed with the phthalo blue or the primary red and then I put in some highlights um, just above where all the shadows are and just trying to blend all the colors out smoothly so this part is just all about analyzing your own painting and seeing how you can improve on it So now that we've finished the sky, we can move on to the roads underneath and for that I use burnt umber and I mix it with black and a little bit of white and then I paint in the roads there. So if you have a look at the reference, you'll see that on the road there are two cars and there is a street lamp that is illuminating that area. So I paint that part of the road a little bit lighter and then for the rest of the roads I mostly just use black paint mixed with a little bit of burnt umber and I just fill in all of that area. So only a little bit of the road is illuminated by the street light and the cars and the rest of it is all in shadow so it's mostly just black.
Now I switch to a really small round brush so I can do some fine details and for the left side of the road I am just putting in where the hedges are so I use that to outline where it is. Then I switch back to my larger round brush and just block in that whole area using black paint. Then going back to my smaller round brush, I am just putting in some small details to show that there are some trees there on the left side. And I repeat the same process on the right side where I use black paint to block it in and then I go in with my small round brush to put in some of the finer details. And then I use black paint to block in the areas that I haven't yet filled in and I just do that on both sides of the road. Now I'm going back to work on the details on the road and I am using burnt umber mixed with black and then I just adjust the lightness of it with white paint. So the part that is illuminated is the road that is more distant and far away and then I'm trying to blend that out into the darker parts of the road which are in shadow because there are no lights shining on it. So I'm just trying to blend out this part and just keep one part of the road slightly in the light so it's slightly lighter in color. For the lines I'm using a lighter mixture so I'm adding in a lot of white and I'm just doing two lines on both sides of the road and one down the middle and then I'm picking up pure white paint and I am illuminating the area where the path is lighter so I'm just adding in pure white paint to those three areas. So on the road there are two cars, one coming this way and one going the other way. And to paint on the headlights I'm just using yellow mixed with a lot of white and I just paint on two little dots to show the headlights and then I also reflect the light onto the ground by just doing these little vertical strokes along the bottom. And for the car that is going the other way, I use red paint to paint on the tail lights. And again, I also go in with some of the yellow paint just to reflect a bit of the light onto the ground. Now to paint in the street light, I'm just using black paint and I'm just doing a vertical line going upwards. And then for the light itself, I'm using white mixed with a little bit of yellow. And you can see I actually went a little bit overboard with the light. I made it a little bit too big, but later I go back and cover up some of the edges so that it looks a bit more realistic. And also on the right side of the pole, you just want to highlight it a bit. So I am highlighting the right side with the same yellow white mixture. And then below that, I also want to highlight it with a little bit of red. Um, that's just the light coming from the sun that's reflecting onto the poles. So I'm just putting a bit of that on the right side. And then I use black paint and just paint in some of these poles on the right side here. And in order to draw in the power lines which connect them, I usually use a Pigma Micron fine liner. And this just makes it a lot easier to control and to do fine details. 
I actually have these in a six pack that I bought off Amazon and they come in different sizes and this is the smallest size in the pack so I always use this one when I'm trying to do really thin lines and it's just a lot easier than using black paint so after I put in those little details then I just add in a few more street lights and I just use again the same yellow and white mixture just to put in a few lights here and there and that's pretty much it for this painting. Hopefully you found this video useful and if you have any questions you can just leave it down below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm hoping to fill up this sketchbook with a lot more studies and to film as much as I can so I can bring you guys along on the journey and to share my knowledge along the way as well. Hope you guys all have a really nice day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!